what did we use right moles three years ago, you know? And so that's one thing. This is our current list. And I think it's a pretty good list. I really like, the, I think we have a good set of bowls. You look at reliability, he's talking about reliability, it's 98, 99, 97, a lot. Look out the high reliability on production. I think that's very strong, especially on production. And we know on health, it's still, you know, we're, uh, it's not as terrible. And so you look and uh, pay attention to the reliability on health all the way from 71 you know, to 99. And so you got to pay a little more attention to that. You know, so these are going to be more subject to change as more milking daughters come in. And also on these, they have uh, milking daughters, the type hasn't really caught up. And you see some of these are, there's 185. So not very many dollars scored yet. So the type still got to catch up some. But I think this is a, a very strong list. And some new things, like we said, this uh, Latin December, now you'll see the feed efficiency number here. And uh, it's with the production because we, we do feel it's a production trait. And uh, fertility index there, along with the health traits. And so, and a new thing to put on here is not, is body, body uh, composite score because of the concern of the, uh, how large how large the cows are getting. This is uh, the one to put it there just to uh, be on the front page, just so people have quick reference to it uh, when they're selecting bulls. Anyway, this is one I made up. This is from the top 15 genomic young sires from December 2011. This, is, this was the ranking then, and this was their TPI at that time. And, uh, and I think they've turned out pretty good. If you look at their rank on the current rank, where they would rank on the current list. Some of these are in red. They're, uh, they have enough milking daughters, but enough type daughters scored yet to uh, rank on the official list. But this is where they would rank at this time. And so, uh, so I think of the top 15 bulls, there's only uh, two not on the top 100, and most of these are in the top 20, well, 26, except for that one. So I think that's a pretty good list. Um, you can see where their TPIs are now. And this is a concern. This is what we're hearing from, um, from the geneticists. They still have concern about the drop, you know, from when a, a bull, uh, from the young sires to the prune bulls. Uh, except for mobile here, all of them have pretty good drops, even if they're, you know, there's a 100, 100 point drop, even if he's still a top five bull. So that's something they're still concerned with. But, uh, uh, so they're working on that. I think they're always continually uh, uh, trying to get that number adjusted right. And uh, another thing I was looking at too is some of these bulls, who are base change, but bulls like Mayfield, even though he's here, I mean, I was looking at him. He was a 2,000 pound milk bull and four points on type, you know, and that was extremely high. And, and of course, he's, we know he's not a four point type bull, but uh, they're still good cattle. But uh, anyway, interesting list. But so this looks great. But if you look back to the uh, August, this doesn't look so good. This is, it was like a totally, the whole top 15 almost totally turned over in three months. But you look at these and you got quite a few, almost half of them that didn't hold in there. And uh, fortunately I used more in December than I didn't use that many of this one. <laughs> 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 I felt mean, pretty good. I only used the uh, Shamrock and Book of Observer, that's about it. So anyway, so it's, uh, I thought both those lists were very interesting, and it just depends, you know, if you're a supporter of genomics, you show the December list, and you're skeptical, and you show the August, you know. I'm sure uh, Dave Selman will bring up August, so he's, he's always skeptical. So. And uh, these are the two new TPI components. We we're talking about uh, the feed efficiency, and this is this is how they're figuring the feed efficiency. This is the dollar value of the milk minus feed cost for extra milk, and that was like cost you had extra, you know, cost per area, extra pound, and then minus maintenance cost. And of course, this is based on how large the cow is. And so that's how they're figuring efficiency. efficiency. And again, we're counting that in the, in the production portion. And then this is a fertility index. And one reason we went to this because of the low, low heritability and the accuracy, but even though we're getting some great DPR numbers like Paula showing and uh, correlations, but, we, but this was adding to the strength of the fertility by adding in uh, Heifer conception rate and count conception rate at these lower percents and, and uh, feeling we're getting a better correlation on uh, fertility. Uh, and this is the, the formula that, of course, they viewed in December with uh, feed efficiency in there and uh, fertility index is right there. <coughs> Replace the DPR with the, with the fertility index. And uh, 
And one thing that I uh, wanted to bring up, uh, you know, I've got heard the announcement as far as the, little, the change in the formula is going to be in, in April. Not any strain, change in the, the way we weighted it, but it's changes in the, the bottom number, the standard deviations, which standardizes each trait. And what happened was, uh, is the USDA, they still do all the formulas and algorithms, you know, that the council just has the database is they uh, use a new animal model for production. So that includes somatic cell and the uh, production traits. And so we have minor differences and deviations on those. And then they also, they are, uh, figure DPR a uh, new way. Uh, you know, it's, it's based on days open, but they never figured in voluntary waiting period. So now they're figuring in voluntary waiting period and it's changed that number. We have a bigger spread. You, you see higher values and they're bigger spreads. And so instead of dividing that by one, you know, now we're gonna divide it by 1.25. So basically, we're, you can say, almost say this is like 25%, got 25% more weight than we intended. And, same, and then the DP, DPR is such a big part of productive life that also is gonna change by about 20%. 20% more weight than we intended, uh, well, than the GAC can, intended on the TBI formula. So, uh, so in April, these are the new standard deviations and, uh, and they always use these to standardize the TPI from run to run. That's one thing we don't, it doesn't affect the base change. We try to keep it uh, stable. So this is what it takes to, uh, to stabilize the, the TPI is the 2187 at the end here, so. And again, uh, the weighting factors is 46% production, 28 health, and 26 confirmation. Those are all the deal there, so. Anyway, and I got this from Alta. Of course, this is 